In this video, I'm gonna show you how to sandwich two photos together to make a multiple exposure. So in this image here, this is an image I did a long time ago. Uh, it is a close-up of an eye and the lands and a landscape sandwiched with a landscape where there's hot air balloons. So you can see a hot air balloon up here and there's actually a hot air balloon right there in the center of the eye, which is why I sandwiched these two together. So sometimes you can kind of plan out your composition a little bit uh, to where the two photos are specifically taken to sandwich together and you'll see some examples in, a, in the PowerPoint. Um, or you can kind of just play around with your the different negatives that you have and see which ones work well together and maybe you have something that kind of lines up like these do um, so that they can be sandwiched together. So a few things that you want to remember when you're sandwiching. First of all, with your negatives, you're going to be putting your two negatives into the enlarger together. You will not be able to combine a horizontal and a vertical uh, picture together, okay, because they would be crisscrossing over each other like that, and you would have the, you know, the holes of the film would be showing both ways, uh, and you just can't crop that out. That would be too much cropping. So they both, both photos need to be going the same direction, okay, so that you can put them into the negative carrier together going the same way. Um, the second thing you want to remember is that the two photos should be equally exposed, should have uh, consistent values between the two, meaning that you don't have one photo that's super dark and the other photo is, is normal or even light. The dark one is always going to overpower the lighter one, so they need to be equal in exposure. Okay, So going the same direction and equal exposure. If you have those two things uh, and, and you want to sandwich two photos together, you can, um, first of all, with the negative carrier, and we'll go ahead and get the negative carrier out here. Remember the handle over here on the left side of the enlarger to raise the uh, top part of the enlarger head to pull out the negative carrier. So you're going to be putting your two negatives together in the carrier itself. Um, now you can, and you can even see there's some uh, tape left on there. You can tape your film down in place. It just kind of helps hold things um, in place because when you put the two in there, sometimes they shift around a little bit. And especially if you're trying to get things specifically lined up, um, you will want to make sure that you have them taped down. So you can put in your first negative. You can put a little piece of scotch tape over, uh, maybe on the side over here, but basically just over where the holes are just to hold that down. And then I put my other one right on top of that and slide that over to whichever one I'm gonna be sandwiching together. And then tape that down as well once I get that in place. Okay, so I would have both of those taped down together. So it will be quite dark. It will be, uh, you know, hard to see through the film. So because of that, you will need a longer exposure time for your test strip, and we will have the aperture all the way open. All right, so we will get those in place, close that down, and put that back in the enlarger. So for your uh, test strip for this, like I said, because it's dark, you will need more time. Now, if you can see through the film pretty well, um, I would start the exposure at five seconds each on the timer. You could even do 10, 15, 20 seconds each, depending on how dark it is once you put your two uh, pictures in there together. Okay, but I would have your um, timer set at at least five seconds. And again, make sure it says five, oops, went down too far, 5.0 for the time for the test strip, okay? Um, and again, you can increase that more if you need to, or you can ask me and I would help you with that. Um, the other thing I would do is to make sure that your lens is uh, set so that it's all the way open and set to 3.5. I don't know if you can see that right there. Um, and I have to turn that the other direction. So all the way to the left, okay, so that it says 3.5 lined up there with the little dot. Or, you know, just opening it so that it's at the, at the brightest setting and you can see that, you know, down here if it's at the brightest setting or not. Now, of course, if you add filters um, and you would want to add filter before you do the test strip, 
If you add filters, that's going to make it even darker. So you may need to go even higher on the timer, and that's fine as well. These do sometimes take longer to expose. Now with this picture, I did have to do, and it is a little bit dark, but you can kind of see the hot air balloon there. I did have to dodge a little bit over the center of the eye in order for that to show up. I probably also could have done a little burning up here at the top portion to make the uh, sky just a little bit darker, bring out a little bit of detail on that. So sometimes when you're sandwiching, you might have to do a little uh, dodging and burning in combination of that. Um, so that is basically how to sandwich. You're just gonna do a test strip for longer with more light. Uh, but you do have to make sure that your pictures are going the same direction and that you don't have one that's darker than the other. That's really kind of the key for having sandwiching turn out well. And uh, once you have your test strip made, we'll figure out your time and it will be a longer time, um, but that's about it.